exercise 12.3, we have a make or buy component. Current Control manufactures a variety of electrical switches. The company is currently manufacturing all its own component parts. An outside supplier is offered to sell a switch to Current Control for $32 per unit. To evaluate this offer, Current Control has gathered the following information relating to its own cost of producing the switch internally. And I've replicated that on the screen for you. One uh, thing of note that I didn't put on the screen, under fixed manufacturing overhead, traceable, we have $8. We are told that 25% of that, or $2, are supervisory salaries, $2 per unit. And the other 75% represents depreciation of special equipment that has no resale value. So $6 of that 8 represents a, a cost of which there's nothing we can do about. Required, number one, assuming that the company has no alternative use for the facilities now being used to produce the switch, should the outside supplier's offer be accepted? Show all computations. Well, um, the first thing we can do is uh, we can just put in the $32 right away for the outside purchase price, which is what I've done. So if we buy from the outside, let's see what we can avoid. And what we're looking for here are costs that, uh, that are relevant. Relevant costs are ones that we wouldn't incur going forward. Uh, an irrelevant one is one where, yes, we're going to incur going forward, or it's a sunk cost and we don't care. Would we incur direct materials going forward if we buy from the outside? Um, no. So it becomes a relevant, uh, a relevant choice if we make them. Um, if we do make them, will we incur direct labor? Yes, nothing we can do about that. What about variable manufacturing overhead? Nothing we can do about that. What about the fixed manufacturing overhead traceable? If we make it, if we buy from outside, do we still pay that eight bucks? Well, now we're told that two dollars is supervisory salaries, which we can avoid, but six dollars is for depreciation on equipment that we can't get rid of. So we're still going to have to deal with that. So in this particular respect, only $2 uh, can be avoided. The fixed manufacturing overhead, it says common but allocated. Anything we can do about that? No. We buy from an outside supplier. We're still going to pay that $16 per unit. So there's nothing we can do about it. So we can pay $32 to an outside supplier, but all that's really doing is eliminating $27 per unit of our own cost. So the difference in favor of continuing to make it is $5. Part 2 of our make or buy a component question says suppose that if the switches were purchased, current control could use the freed capacity to launch a new product. The segment margin of the new product would be $78,000 per year. Should current control accept the offer to buy the switches from the outside supplier for $32 each? show your computations. Now let me just repeat, it says the segment margin, it doesn't say the contribution margin, it says segment margin. So that includes the contribution margin less all the traceable expenses that would apply to that. So the segment margin is the appropriate uh, uh, number we're looking at. Well I've gone ahead and already filled out uh, our analysis here. Our differential cost per unit, if we buy it we know we're paying 32. If we make it um, the only differential cost we incur are $27. Uh, because if we buy it from outside, we can avoid those 27 and only those 27. We've already figured that out in part one. Since we're making 12,000 units, we can either buy 12,000 units at 32 bucks for a total cost of 384,000, or make them uh, at the incremental cost not the total cost, now that's just the incremental cost, just the cost that we could avoid if we bought it. 27 times the 12,000 is 324. So we saw that we were better off by $5 a unit, 12,000 units, there's our 60,000 bucks. There's the difference between the two. But if we do continue to make it, we cannot do anything else. But if we don't make it anymore, suddenly we open up a lot of capacity and a lot of space uh, to uh, incur uh, some other uh, business activity that provides a segment margin. So because we could do that, if we continue to make it, we must account 
for for the case where well look if we continue to make it uh, um, we're, we don't have the $78,000 in segment margin that could have been uh, created. So that's really a cost. Now the tricky thing here, uh, you go back to chapter 2, I said it there and I said it in, in the uh, lecture videos for this one as well. This is not an accounting cost. You would just sort of have to know that there were other alternatives that we could have we uh, considered if we didn't do this, there are other things we could have done that wasn't part of the alternative, but it's not an explicit cost in the accounting record, so if we're just relying on numbers in the, in the accounting information system, we will miss opportunity cost all the time. So you have to think, well, what could we be doing if we don't do this? So if I'm not going to school, well, what could I be doing? Well, you could be working, not for much. Believe me, not for much, but you could be. So when we, we figure out the cost of going to school, we say, well, there's a cost of tuition, there's a cost of books, there's a cost to live in a new city. If it's not my own city, the cost of moving, etc. But it's also the opportunity cost of not making the money that I could make if I were in school. I would challenge you to say, well, what if you don't go to school, what's the opportunity cost? And the opportunity cost is much higher income for the rest of your life. <laughs> there we go. Anyways, I'm, I'm way too afield. But you do have to look at the opportunity cost of doing something or not doing something. So that is a true cost because we could have earned it, right? So really, it's $402,000 of the total cost. Hard costs of three hundred and twenty-four, dollars and foregone extra profit of seventy eight dollars if we just got rid of it. So four hundred two dollars versus $38,000. Suddenly, we have an $18,000 difference in favor of purchasing from an outside supplier. Now, one more note on this. If you're not going to enter accounting and you're going to enter into sales, and you're approaching a company saying, listen, why don't you outsource some of your product to us? Look at the argument that you should be making. Your argument that you should be making is not only can we save you all the incremental costs you incur, how we also open up a huge area where you can suddenly do something else. You see that? Remind the company that not only will they save money, maybe that's not enough to get you the job if you're the salesperson, you can't land the contract, but you can also suggest to them that, you know what, it opens up a lot of capacity for you to explore more profitable things, things that leverage your strengths. You see that? Since if you know how a business makes decisions, suddenly you become a better salesperson of that business because you appeal to their decision-making process, right? Look at that. Learning not only how to be an accountant, but how to be a good salesperson to an accountant. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Exercise 12.4, evaluating a special order. We're still on learning objective two. Sato Jewelers has had a request for a special order for 10 gold bangles for the members of a wedding party. <clears throat> the normal selling price of a gold bangle is $389.95 and its unit product cost is 264 as shown below and you can see on the screen that I have replicated the data it shows unit product cost of 264 <clears throat> most of the manufacturing overhead is fixed and unaffected by variations in how much jewelry is produced in any given period however seven dollars of the overhead is variable depending on the number of bangles produced so there we have our seven variable which means 28 is fixed the customer uh, would like special filigree applied to the bangles. The fist filigree would require additional materials costing $6 per bangle and would also require acquisition of a special tool costing $465 <clears throat> that would have no other use once the special order was completed. This order would have no effect on the company's regular sales and the order could be filled using the company's existing capacity without affecting any other order. Required. What effect would accepting this order have on the company's operating income if a special price of $349.95 is offered per bangle for this order? Should the special order be accepted at this price? Well, we know that we don't have any constraints that we can take on this order of 10 bangles without any difficulty whatsoever. So that kind of helps us in our analysis. 
So here's our uh, direct uh, materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. We know 7 is variable, 28 is fixed. If we take on the special order, it's going to cost us $6 more in materials. And we got a one-time charge, a fixed cost of $465. Should we take this on? Well, we're looking here at just the incremental cost, just the differential cost. So we have to pull apart what's relevant. So let's start with revenue because if we sell 10 more at 349.95 well that's differential right so our incremental revenue we'll start with that and we'll uh, put it in terms of a, a total uh, amount and a per unit amount so we have 10 and we're gonna sell them for 349.95 so that will give us 3499.50 total or on a per unit basis 349.95. <clears throat> now we just want to deal with our incremental costs or our differential costs. Just the costs that will be incurred if we take this order. Well, if we take this order, will there be any direct material costs? extra well yes there will there will be the 143 that it normally costs plus an extra six dollars so these extra 10 will cost 149 dollars each per unit so that would be 1490 dollars in total or 149 per unit will we in encounter any direct labor costs for these extra 10 yes we will at $86. Now you may say, but whether we take the order or not, we still pay the 86. Careful now. This is a variable cost. If we're taking on a special order, all variable costs are in addition. If we're going to sell another 10 units, we have to incur another 10 charges for direct labor. If we didn't take on the order, we would not. That confuses some people that if direct labor doesn't change, I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. It was easy to see with direct materials that it would change. Some people are tempted only to use the 6, but you would use the full 143 because it's 10 more units you're making, so you have to incur 10 more direct material charges of the 143. So you would include the 86 times 10 is 860, and per unit is $86. What about the manufacturing overhead? Well, this is where we need to think a bit. 7 of it is variable, 28 is fixed. So if we take on 10 more units, the fixed portion is not going to change, so it's not important to us. Well, it's important, but it's not relevant to this decision. The only relevant one is the $7 uh, per unit. So we can say that $7 is the relevant cost, so the total relevant cost is $70. And, of course, we have a fixed cost charge. And we're told that we'll have a one-time charge of $465. So we'll have to add that on. The total is $465. Since we're making 10 bangles, the per unit cost is $46.50. So if we, uh, uh, let's try to keep the colors consistent here. If we do our subtraction, $34.99.50 minus all of these costs will give us $614.50. And on the per unit side, $349.95 minus all these costs will give us $61.45. And we can easily see that if we multiply this by 10, that will be our solution. So our impact on operating income for taking on this special order will be an increase of $614.50. Should we take on the special order? Yes, we should.